Hello and welcome to part two of the MapKit tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we will be learning how to create custom annotations and add these annotations to our map. If you haven't completed part one of the MapKit tutorial series, don't worry, you can find the link for that down below in the description. Also, if you find these tutorials helpful, go ahead and subscribe to CodePro and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted for when the newest tutorials are available. All right, enough chit chat, let's begin. So here is where we left off with part one of the tutorial series. We have our user location shown on the map and we zoomed in to a particular location. In this instance, the Apple campus. So what are annotations? Annotations are simply points on the map or areas of interest that have a coordinate that we can pin somewhere. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll add a couple of annotations around where we are and implement the code to render them on the map. Since we picked Apple as our starting location, you can see we're right over here at Apple Infinite Loop. So if we wanted to go to, let's just say, Ortega Park, or better yet, Apple's new Spaceship Campus right over here, we can add annotations to distinguish these two different places on the map in addition to our user location. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So ideally we want to add our annotations after we get the user location and then zoom to the user's location on the map. And it makes sense to do that right after this method occurs. So if you go back into the project and into viewcontroller.swift, we can go ahead and implement that function right below here. So I'm going to create a new function, private func add annotations. And I'm going to create one annotation for Ortega Park and one for Apple Park. So starting with Apple Park first, we'll do let Apple Park annotation equals an MK point annotation. And if we look here at the properties of interest, the main ones that we need to assign are the coordinate, the title, or the subtitle. These are the main uh, properties that we can interact with on a point annotation, which is just a very, very map kit uh, like annotation. It doesn't really have anything pretty on it, uh, such as custom views or images. Uh, so let's go ahead and just assign that really quick and so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so we'll assign the title equal to Apple Park, and we need to create a coordinate for this annotation. So Apple Park annotation dot coordinate equals a CL uh, location coordinate. If I can find that CL location coordinate two D. Oh, there we go. Sometimes autocomplete completely fails again, and I went ahead and went on Google and I searched for the latitude and longitude to get to these two points. And this is what I got back. So I'm going to take uh, right here for my latitude and longitude. And let me just copy those over into Xcode to make it a little bit easier here. And we're going to go ahead and take our latitude and put that here and our longitude for Apple Park and put that here. Let's just clean up that white space. And then we'll go ahead and create another one for the Ortega Park. So let Ortega Park annotation equals MK points annotation. And we'll do the same thing. However, for the Ortega Park annotation, instead of the title, I'll do the subtitle just so you can get a look or see what that looks like. So we'll call this Ortega Park. And finally, the annotation, the coordinate. And what we can do here is simply copy this, but update the latitude and longitude. And I'll take latitude and replace that right here. And we'll take longitude and replace that right here as well. And let's go ahead and add those to the map. So once we've initialized them like so, let me just clean up that white space here. Once we've initialized them, we can simply call map view dot add annotation apple park annotation and map view dot add annotation for the Ortega Park. So let's go ahead and run that in the simulator and see what it looks like. And we must not forget to actually call our function first. So I'm going to go uh, into the did update locations method here from the uh, location manager delegate. 
And right below zoom to latest location, I'm going to call add annotations. And now let's run this in the simulator and see what it looks like. So my simulator is open here, and you can see that now we have these two annotations that we just added, one on Apple Park and one on Ortega Park. And if we zoom in a little bit, and you can see that the annotation for the Apple Park, which uses the title property, always shows the text. When I click on it, the annotation expands, but that's all it does. Now, for the Ortega Park, you can see uh, that there is no text below it. It is using the subtitle property. However, if I click the annotation like this, you'll see that the subtitle shows the name of the park, and then when I click off of it, uh, the subtitle disappears. So that's the difference between uh, title and subtitle on point annotations. But what if we wanted to do further customization? What if we wanted to add our own image, for example, um, and not rely on just this system-themed one that Apple provides? Well, we can do that too. And we can do that with an MK point annotation view. And let's go ahead and implement one of those for Apple Park so you can see what it looks like. So I went ahead and found uh, a couple of free images that we can use here. Uh, a car, a flying saucer, and a tree for the park. And we're going to use each of these images to represent the different annotations on our map. So let's go back to our viewcontroller.swift here. And what we're going to need to do to provide this MK point annotation view customization is we need to implement the MK map view delegate. And it's quite simple. What we can do is go back to our view did load method, and on our map view, we can assign the delegate for the map view equal to self or equal to this view controller. And that simply means that our view controller is going to implement the MK map view delegate protocol. And it looks something like this. We will create an extension on view controller, call this MK. Uh, or implementing MK map view delegate. And once we've done that, let's go in command click on MK map view delegate and take a look at the methods that it offers here. Now, it offers a lot of different customization for things that might happen to the map view, such as zooming and rendering and things like that. But we are interested in view for annotation and did select. So if you click on the annotation, you'll get a notification that, hey, this annotation was selected. Now, you can implement any of these as you desire, but for our purposes, we're only going to implement those two. So let's go back to our, impl or our implementation here, and we're just going to start typing view for an annotation, and uh, we'll return nil for right now. And uh, we're also going to do a did select uh, right here, and we'll just do a print statement, print the annotation was selected and uh, we'll just spit out the uh, view itself right into the console and, and you know, you'll notice that's the MK annotation view but we can get the underlying dot annotation uh, we'll just print the title uh, those are optional so that's fine for right now and one other little change we're gonna need to make here is we were using the subtitle um, in, in this example for Ortega Park. I'm going to switch this to title just to make it a little bit easier when we're determining which annotation we want to just put an image on and uh, then we can go ahead and flush out our view for annotation method right here. And we can silence this warning really fast by just clicking it and we'll use the uh, recommendation here to get rid of that. So when you look at this uh, method, you'll notice if you've worked with table views, it's kind of similar to self row at index path. Uh, it takes an element from our, you know, the data source and uh, tries to associate a view to it and return that view. Uh, so you'll you'll notice that um, it's actually really really similar, and in, in, in even how we we call it. So uh, we can we can say basically let um, annotation view equal map view dot dq uh, reusable annotation view with identifier similar to dq reusable cell with identifier in a table view. Now since we haven't registered these um, or registered the classes I'm going to use the optional one here uh, or the one that returns the optional type and I'm just going to call this uh, annotation view and uh, since it could be optional if it is nil we're going to need to instantiate it and uh, let me spell that right. There we go. 
so we'll need another check if uh, annotation view is nil then let's go ahead and uh, instantiate that so annotation view equals mk annotation view with the uh, annotation that comes back from the delegate method and the identifier that we want to refer to it by. So I'm just going to say, hey, uh, we're just going to call all of these annotation views for right now. And uh, we'll return that. And I also need to make that uh, mutable. So from let, we'll just say that's var, because uh, we're going to reinstantiate it there. And so far, so good. Uh, so if we look here, you see that the delegate method gives us back a map view and a uh, annotation, and then we use this annotation, we inject it into the annotation views constructor here, the initializer here, and return it back. Uh, and so how do we know, okay, well, how do we assign an image to this? How do we determine which type of image or customizations we want to do for this particular annotation view? So uh, it's useful that if you take a look at what's provided here by commands clicking into MK annotation view, uh, we can see what this API provides for us. You'll notice right away that it derives from UI view, so you can do pretty much most of the UI view things here on your annotation view. You can see that it has an annotation, which uh, contains the coordinate and the title and so on and so forth. Um, and you'll also see that it has an image property here, an optional image, and that's what we are going to use um, to uh, render the different images. So let's go back to uh, our method here, and we're gonna do a couple of checks. We're going to say that if our annotation uh, dot title happens to equal Apple Park, which is the annotation we built up ahead, then in this case, annotation view dot image equals a UI image named saucer for our flying saucer. And uh, let's see here, else if the annotation dot title equals Ortega Park, then we're going to do this, equals a UI image named tree for the park. And then finally, uh, there's one more case we need to check for. We need to check for the uh, tree or the user's location, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Oh, and since these titles are actually optional, we want to make sure that we handle that gracefully. So we'll just do an if let title uh, equals annotation dot title, and that title happens to equal Apple Park. We'll do that same thing here. Uh, else if uh, let title equals annotation annotation dot title, where that uh, title happens to equal Ortega Park, then do that. Uh, else if the annotation equals map view dot user location and I'll explain this in a second annotation view dot image equals a UI image named car and finally um, annotation view dot can show callout equal to true. So what did we just do here? Uh, so the, the key distinction is this last else if uh, case right here. So the user location uh, in and of itself is a type of annotation. If you command click into it, uh, you can drill down further into seeing that, okay, MK user location is a type of MK annotation. It has all of the same properties with the addition of is updating uh, for, uh, you know, if that location is changing because it's a user. Uh, so the reason we're using the identity operator here is to determine that if the annotation that we are receiving from our delegate uh, basically uh, is an instance of the user location, and if that happens to be the case, then we're going to go ahead and render the car image. Now the can show callout is going to be triggered uh, basically when we tap on the annotation, which allows for providing uh, callout views and, and other customization there. So let's go ahead and run this now and analyze uh, that everything is working as we expect it. All right, so the simulator's up and running, and look at that. 
we have a car, we have a tree, and we have a flying saucer. So if we click in a little bit more to zoom in, uh, you can see that our car represents where we are, our location. The flying saucer represents where Apple Park is over here. And uh, you can see that the tree represents the park that we placed right there. Now, if you click on the um, annotation view, you'll see that it calls out, says, okay, that's the title, Ortega Park. Uh, same thing if we click on the car, my location, and um, same thing for Apple Park here. If we click on that, the Apple Park title shows up. Now, one other thing I want to call out here is if we throw a breakpoint in the did select here, and uh, we go ahead and click that again, you're going to see that we're going to get, uh, if I can trigger it, and click off, and click back. There we go. You can see that we're going to get the did select call here. And uh, if we print out the title of the annotation that was selected, you can see that it's Apple Park. So you can use that to you know, take some kind of interaction based on user selection uh, for a particular annotation on the map. And that wraps up part two of the iOS Map Kit tutorial series. Make sure you stick around for the third and final part of the series where we're going to learn how to draw directions from the user location to a particular annotation on the map. And you'll find the completed code for part two available on GitHub. The link for that is down below in the description, and part two is going to be the starting point for part three coming up. And as always, if you liked Code Pro tutorials and you found this helpful, please go ahead and subscribe to Code Pro and like the video. Uh, it really helps the channel out, and make sure you hang around for part three. Thank you so much for stopping by.